Anybody who has babysat children for longer than 15 minutes knows that adulthood is a destination these tiny humans can't get to fast enough. Adulthood is where you learn to not physically attack someone because they burned your bagel bites. So, to the delight of babysitters and scholars everywhere, my paper took uh, uh, Lord of the Flies through the lens of Sigmund Freud and sought to prove that it is in fact unsuppressed childish tendencies that bring about destruction in society, not necessarily a loss of innocence brought about by adulthood. So my research is based on the idea of the anti-human, which was established by Immanuel Kant in the late 18th century. He said that true enlightenment was man's emergence from his own self-incured immaturity, which basically means that humans aren't as great as they think they are. Then came Sigmund Freud, and he took it a step further. Humans were driven by instincts or by urges. They were made out to be something more like an animal than a human. And although dropping Freud's name today probably won't win you a lot of points, using his work in conjunction with Golding's actually makes a lot of sense. Freud's work was still very, very important in the realm of the human psyche when Golding was publishing, making their work compatible, if not necessarily contemporary. So, where do we find Sigmund in Lord of the Flies? Well, the first instance of Freudian psychology is found in the way the boys revel in being dirty, which is one of the first phases of sexual development, according to Freud. In one instance, Ralph tells the boys where the lavatory should be, but they ignore him. They laugh at his insistence, even though they're old enough to know the consequences of their literal dirty habits. In another scene, the boys cover themselves in the blood of the sow after they've killed her, but it's more for sport than for sustenance. Another instance of Freudian psychology is in the lack of what he calls sublimation, things like art or music that adults usually produce once they realize that society can't function on instinct alone. Now the boys attempt something like this. They cover themselves in war paint, but they do it for selfish reasons. They do it to cover themselves as they hunt first animals and then each other. And this, combined with their inability, or I guess lack of desire, to keep clean, makes it so they can't run a functional society. Now this idea of a functional society, at least to Freud, is based on the idea of the adult or the suppression of childish urges. Now this is emulated in the character of Piggy. When he is about to be murdered, he tells the other boys, what are the grown-ups going to think? Which makes us seem that adulthood is the standard which society should be judged by. However, childhood wins out over adulthood in this instance and he's pushed off the cliff to his death. So those are the three main points. The focus on cleanliness, on um, sublimation, and the adult imposed order that make up my research. But what do we do with the anti-human when it comes to the humanities? Isn't that kind of like in direct opposition to what we decided we wanted to study? Not exactly. See, if we really want to understand the human experience, we have to start at the very beginning. We have to start at childhood, not just studying the products of adults. In this sense, we're able to get a better understanding of what it means to be a human, to understand why children are so obsessed with bagel bites, or maybe, I guess, more realistically, what it really means to be a human what really is inside the darkness of man's heart. Thank you.